it, Let's it, return in that, in that case, if we may, to the current crisis, which is an energy and fuel crisis, £300 on average fuel bills this winter yes. and so on. Will you nationalise the big six energy companies? Well, the immediate problem with the energy companies is how we ensure the supply of energy um, through the winter um, and into next year. And to do right. that without raising the prices for working people. So that's because an, that, that is an the immediate price. issue. That but, is the immediate price. But I'm asking you a big principled question. Will you nationalise the big six energy companies, yes or no? No. No, you will not. This is what you said as part of your ten pledges. Public services should be in public hands, not making profits for shareholders. Support common ownership of rail, mail, energy and winter. You, you promised that 18 months ago and now you're saying no. Why? But I don't see nationalisation there. There is well, what, a huge, what, 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 else does, what else does public hands mean? There's a world... Of, well, well, public services should be in public hands, but when it comes to something like energy, we've got an immediate problem in the next few months that we've got to solve. And then when it comes to yeah. common ownership, I'm pragmatic about this. I do not agree with the argument that says um, we must be ideological. Look what so, happens. So, what does common ownership mean if it doesn't mean nationalisation? Look what happens when we're ideological about this. Track and trace put into private yeah. sector £37 billion. When well, we were arguing it would be better in the public sector with local authorities. So, I'd be pragmatic about it. And where common ownership is value for money for the taxpayer and delivers better services, see, then there should be common ownership. Poor, poor Ed Miliband believed you when you said that. And he was asked on Newsnight just the other day about this exactly. And he said, we're in favour of common ownership, absolutely. Wait for the conference. But Keir Starmer said in his leadership campaign he was in favour of public ownership. We haven't changed that commitment. Maybe we haven't, but you have. Andrew, I've just set out the principles we will apply. We're not going to be ideological. I'm going to be pragmatic. I don't I'm going to be what pragmatic. That means. What that well, let me spell it out. What that means is that where common ownership is value for money for the taxpayer and delivers a better service, then I'm in favour of common ownership. An example I would give is track, trace and isolate, because the government took an ideological position to put it I'm out to the private sorry, sector. We're veering 30, off to the government again. Well, I'm still trying to... Well, I'm, I'm still trying to example. understand actually what you would do for the energy companies. If you're not going to nationalise them and the, the, the ownership is going to be changed, what happens? Who owns it and how? £37 billion pounds later on track and trace in the private sector. Uh, and it should have been in the, in the public sector with our local authorities. Mm -hmm. When it so, comes to uh, common ownership, we will apply those principles going into the election. Listen, if you have said that and you can't stand by it 18 months later on, how can you ever say that Boris Johnson is breaking promises and accuse him of breaking election promises if you've broken that one? Well, Andrew, I've explained the situation, the principles we will apply to energy or any other sector, um, and we will apply it. It's common sense. If it's, if it's value for the taxpayer um, and it delivers a better public service, then um, we would be in favour of, of, of common ownership. Does someone who thinks only women have a cervix is welcome in the Labour Party?